Hi, everybody. Welcome to Happy Hour here on Brew Sports. We hope your Tuesday is going well. We are excited to have you along for the ride as we conclude our programming for the day here on a Tuesday. We welcome you inside the studio. I'm Baxter Colburn, joined alongside by the lovely Tika Griesbach. Tika, happy Tuesday. How are we doing today? Great. Good. Good Good to see you. Uh, you, You've recovered from the the, the Bachelor chaos last night. Yeah. uh, yeah. The the drama, of course. So much drama. So much (laughs) drama. But I mean, when the women tell all, sometimes nobody really knows what's going to come out, I feel like. Yeah, I turned it off after a while. Did you? Okay. Just like, you know what? So much I felt so bad for Chris Harrison, too. Maybe they're just shouting all over the place. And Chris is like, You can't even get a word. Ladies, like, it's my show, ladies. Like, stop talking. (laughs) I was waiting for him just to snap. Be like, everybody, shut up. Yeah. Just listen to me. But. We'll talk about The Bachelor actually a little bit later on just because I'm always curious to get your thoughts uh, to hear how everything shook down and uh, your your predictions for the final two as well. Uh, We're going to be joined a little bit here by Dom Garrett as well too to talk about college basketball uh, and the excitement that is uh, swooming around uh, with the conference tournaments of course taking place right now and other excitement uh, as well too. So he'll be joining us uh, via video in just a little bit. Uh, we do want to remind you all, of course, as well, that you can get us right here on Happy Hour uh, Monday through Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. Central Time uh, live on Brew Sports Facebook. If you ever miss a show, you can get it on our website, brewsportsnet.com. Uh, you can also find it on YouTube as well, too. Just search Brew Sports, and you can find all the latest and greatest shows uh, there for people to see. If you want to interact with the broadcast, of course, commenting below. Uh, you can also comment. Uh, you know, you can also send us tweets as well. I am at Baxter Colburn. Uh, what's your Twitter, Teeks? I don't remember. At Teeks underscore seven. Teeks. How do you <laughs> how do you spell Teeks? Is there like a Q or anything weird? No, in there no. T e a k s. T e a k s. Yeah, it's back from like middle school. I oh, never there you changed go. It, like, so, what yeah. up, Teeks? <laughs> like you had a Twitter in middle school? Or whenever I first made it? Yeah, I think it was like eighth grade. Oh my gosh. I didn't really use it as. I guess I'm way, older but... than you by a couple of years, so I guess that yeah. makes me feel even older than that. You're like back when I was in middle school. I'm like back when I. I was in college. It's not, it's not that big of a gap, but still. But holy cow. Well, yes, uh, Teeks underscore seven, uh, at Baxter Colburn, at Brew Sports Net as well, too, or hashtag Brew Sports as well, too. All that great stuff there for you. All right, uh, Tika. I'm not going to call you Teeks. I almost did. be like, all right, Teeks. You can call me Teeks. Teeks. All right, Teeks. What's on tap today for us uh, in our opening segment here? Uh, some funny things, some sad things, some yummy things. All mm-hmm. depends really on uh, on how you look at it. But uh, what, what have we got on tap today so far to kick off the show today? Well, first, we're going to talk about Tom Brady. Ooh, um, yeah, I like Tom Brady. I'll talk about Tom Brady. Good, good. Uh, you, you've seen his name on workout equipment, uh, cookbooks. Yeah, he's got his own brand. Nuts. Yeah. Um, so now it's going to be a prepared meal subscription. Really? Kind of like a, like a, like a monthly, like clothing subscription or a wine subscription. You can, yeah. Know, so what, so what is he doing though? He's sending people can get like what little packages of food or whatever. I guess it's the company's called purple carrot, I, I believe. Purple carrot. Yep. So it's a plant-based meal. Which is different. Interesting. But it kind of goes hand in hand with his diet. Doesn't he have a pretty strict diet? Well, he does, know? yeah. I mean, NFL players usually, or professional athletes as a whole, usually have just insane diets yeah. that they have to stick to to stay in shape, really. So this right. is interesting. Purple carrot. That's kind of an odd name, honestly. I usually try to avoid purple carrots. Yeah, I, you know, yeah it's a very that, interesting doesn't name. Doesn't that mean that they're not good? Or, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never, I don't I've never seen, I've ever a, purple seen a purple carrot. I mean, and the, and the packaging is, is white and red, too. So yeah. purple, literally purple has nothing to do with anything. It's just one of those cute, unique names, basically like, oh, purple carrot. It's like, oh, you think of it. It's like, oh, Bruce Sports. Well, obviously it's something cool. Like <laughs> you think of it and it translates mentally, you know, the way it's supposed to basically. Yeah. But I guess, um, well, as you know, many people would probably guess a lot of women subscribe to this um, plant, plant-based meal diet. Of course. Diet. People um, are vegan. People are trying yeah. to eat healthy. I get it. Yeah. But they think that, you know, having Tom Brady... Along with it, maybe that'll get more men to subscribe. Do you think that's realistic, though? Do you think how many men are going to want to eat plant-based meals? Right. I mean, yeah, I don't know how. There's no meat. Well that's gonna men like the meat. Out. Yeah. You know, like give me the the chicken, the beef, the oh, bacon. For sure. You know, all of that. I'm not that saying women don't like that either, but that's so non-traditional of men. I feel like to be like, yes, Tom Brady. Most people, I feel like, almost laugh at Tom Brady even more. I mean, did you, yeah. you saw that he did those, those commercials for Ugg and everything, you know, the, the yeah. promotionals for Ugg boots and people are like, he wears Ugg boots. Now he just eats plants. Like, yeah. People are like, <laughs> how has this guy won five Super Bowls? I don't understand. This is the most girly man I've ever met basically. Yeah. I mean, I hadn't heard of it until I saw, you know, that Tom Brady had, you know, started working with the company. Yeah. But, um, so I feel like he'll definitely bring more 
people in. I don't know I if it'll so. increase men, though, well, the chance of men. The price is what worries me, um, and I don't know how you would feel about this. Uh, $78 a week, you get six meals, uh, which is a $10 premium over the company's regular meal plan. How do you... I don't know if I'd spend seventy eight dollars. I don't think a I week. could. I don't. I mean, I definitely couldn't right now as a college student. Right. I mean, it's something you, I'd be interested as, like, in, but that's a lot. Worker, though. That's a lot of money just for what six meals? For six plant based meals, so that's yeah. your, your lunch and your dinner. I'm assuming. Right. You know, is what that is what that really boils down to. Yeah, that's. I think that's a little too much money for that for me, but. And maybe I don't know. we're not the demographic though that he's trying to appeal to. I don't necessarily right. know if he's trying to uh, to do that. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I feel like that's yeah, – certain people obviously can jump on certain things as they want to, but I feel like with Tom Brady's name attached to it as well too, so many people are going to be like, wow, I'm sure he probably cheated with the way he got these greens in here. Yeah. You know, people, it's not really actually plants, and it's not actually good for you. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure people just read into things way too much. Well, I guess their phrase, Purple Carrot's phrase, is eat like a goat. Eat like a goat. Yeah. I don't, how does one so eat like a goat? So it's referencing a goat's plant-based diet <laughs> and the acronym greatest of all time, GOAT. Of course. <laughs> See, that makes more sense. And now, now that you say that my brain, was, my brain was slow to catch up to you, and then as soon as you said that, I was like, ah, because Tom Brady <laughs> is called the GOAT, of course, you know, the greatest of all yeah. time at the quarterback position. But I don't know if I'd want to walk around with a slogan on it. Like if I got, if you got a t-shirt and someone gave you a t-shirt that said, eat like a goat, you'd be like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that's kind of I, I picture goats in Door County where I, where I grew up with a lot, eating on the grass roofs. Oh, on the roofs. Roof. Yes. yes. That's what I think of eating like a goat, just like, you know, fat, furry animals walking around eating wherever they want. Yeah. That doesn't sound that's like a, a workout program I want to be involved no. in. No. You're like, eat like a goat. Be like, I'd, I'd rather not. <laughs> But eat, when, they, when you actually look at it, though, and say, okay, eat like a goat in the sense of eating like a champion, eat the plants. Yeah, makes, makes more makes sense. Makes more sense, I guess. Yeah. I, I understand that. So uh, I don't think I'm going to subscribe to it. You don't think you're going to probably subscribe to no. it. I don't know if any of you think uh, they're going to, to do that as well, too. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Greg on Facebook asks if uh, if it's just Packer fans that think of Tom Brady and the Patriots as cheaters. I actually don't think Tom Brady's a cheater. <laughs> Fun fact. Um, and I don't even know if it's the Packer fans that think he's cheaters as well, too. I think it's more so teams that have to deal with Brady on a you know consistent basis, the, yeah. the Jets, the Bills, even the Dolphins as well, too, that have been victims of the scandals. Um, and I, when you the whole BS about Deflate Gate, I think is just stupid. Honestly, I mean, air pressure in football is the temperature. The fact that millions of dollars were spent to just try to determine whether or not you know the PSI was calibrated properly is just ludicrous. In my in my opinion, I think you could have done so much more with that money. In general, I mean, I know of course everybody freaks out and like that money could have gone to charity. It could have gone to the you know orphans. Well, well yeah, of course, obviously anything like that, but. Right. We could have spent our money on so much better than that than trying to, to, to convict somebody of whether or not footballs had the proper air pressure in them, I think. Yeah. But oh, I completely agree. I, I do. So personally, I don't think the, that Tom Brady's a cheater. Just going to put that on the record. <laughs> um, I don't know if you think Tom Brady's a cheater, Tico, based off of the things he's done. I mean, he's a really nice guy, they put, and he's – I mean, everybody's human. Everybody makes mistakes. Right. But to accuse somebody of cheating at that level, I think, is a bit ridiculous, personally. Yeah, I do, too. I think it's kind of – one of those things that's just blown out of proportion. I agree. No, I completely agree with you on that one. Uh, all right. What's the other uh, thing that we want to talk about briefly about what's on tap before we get to Dom Garrett here in just a brief moment? Uh, Andrew Bogut and it's fractured tibia. Oh, poor guy. Great it's, player, but tends to get hurt a lot. But crap luck, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, he lasted 58 seconds. Yeah, it's not very 58 long. seconds. Uh, the Cavaliers, of course trying to make that playoff push in the Eastern Conference, trying to continue to be that number one seed, which is, of course, very unhelpful for playoff time. Mm -hmm. uh, they sign Andrew Bogut uh, as a free agent. His first game ever on the court for the Cavaliers, 58 seconds in, boom, fractured fibia, or tibia, mm -hmm. tibia, not fibia, tibia. I don't know if the fibia is actually a thing. I might just be making tibia. up words now. But tibia, <laughs> fractured tibia, done, gone, boom. He's out for the year. Not like a hey, come, he'll be back in a week or two. It's he's done. Yeah. He's not coming back. And you, you feel for the guy. You feel for the Cavaliers as a whole. I mean, you you want your guys to stay healthy, of course, but you feel even worse for Andrew Bogut, who was excited that new opportunity to to, to probably go win a championship as well. Too Cleveland is such a, a high caliber team. Right. And then just like that, poof, 
gone. Didn't even get a minute. <laughs> Maybe next time, Andrew. I I feel bad. I've never, thankfully, I've never fractured my tibia, so I don't know what that what that entails, what that what that feels like. Thankfully, but yeah, you just, I can't uh, imagine. I think I, I've only broke uh, my pinky toe. I think that's the only like really major. Yeah, hmm. I've uh, I've broken my left arm. Oh uh, really? Yeah, broke my left arm, broke my wrist, and bro- oh my broke goodness. my right foot. Oh you? <laughs> Doing what? I uh, guess you're a soccer player. Yeah, right? I broke my right wrist okay. and my right foot playing soccer. Um, I went for a went, yeah, and then I broke my left arm when I was a kid. Classic Baxter chasing girls on the playground, <laughs> trying to play tag. Okay, uh... I was playing tag. I was it. I was trying to tag these people, and I was the girls running up. To I know. Girls. Hashtag classic Baxter, <laughs> running up this ramp at this park. Um, I don't know if you remember Pamperin Park in Green Bay or not. Yeah, yeah, Pamperin Park familiar. when it like mm-hmm. first opened, running up like. You know, a little bridge basically to, and I s- tripped and fell and of course as a, your natural reaction is your fall is to put your arms out I fell put my arm out hit the side my arm broke in the shape of a Z wow you want to know what even was worse what my mom didn't believe me <laughs> I'm laying on the ground was she there she was she was at the park in a separate place okay. I was there with some family friends and I'm laying on the ground the we like the most surreal thing like it was almost out of a movie where like all these kids like because I was screaming and all these kids are like up in the playground like looking down at me they're just like, uh, like what's wrong with him like his arm shouldn't be doing that kind of a thing and I think he's hurt I know my, exactly my friend came up to me he's like I was like go get my mom and he like ran and like came back she's like he, she doesn't believe you, me oh, what, oh my what do you gosh. mean she doesn't believe you I'm like I'm I screaming on the ground because my arm is broken in three places and then finally she came she's like oh my gosh what's wrong I'm like my you arm. didn't believe me. My arm is broken. How I'm dare like, you? How do you not believe me? I was. Were you mad at her? I, I was in a lot of pain at the time. I, I we use it as a joke every once in a while. I'm just like, come on, mom. Like, really? Like, you're not going to believe me? Like, like that one time you didn't believe me <laughs> yeah. that I broke my arm. I'm like, good lord. So I, I was a little upset about that personally, but uh, I moved on. Well, that's good. I'm a better person. I'm glad to hear. <laughs> I'm going to take a drink really fast. Uh, I think we need to get to our guest. Don't you think so, TK? Yes, I think it's about that time. All right, it is about that time. Uh, we are going to bring in uh, one of our uh, correspondents. Of, he, he covers many sports. I was going to label him with a single sport and then decided that he is a man of many sports, so I feel like labeling him as a one-sport correspondent, it would be a disservice to him as a whole. So uh, it is Dom Garrett. Uh, he joins us now on Happy Hour. Dom, welcome, sir, uh, and how are we doing today? Doing absolutely fantastic. It's a uh, it's a, a balmy, uh, rainy day in Seattle, but uh, it's March. But it's March, and college basketball is going on, and I get to talk about sports in the middle of the day and drink a beer with you guys. So, hey, what it, you, all in all, it's pretty good. What are you uh, What are you What are you drinking? I'm curious. Tika and I both have our uh, our drinks of choice of this year. Uh, what do you've got going on with you? Uh, what I've got going on, I have a uh, sea pine. Uh, here it's a yeah it's a great IPA uh, local up here in in Seattle so um, I'm at, at the co-working space and there just happens to be a tap of it all the time so you know cheers to you guys yeah cheers to you as well too <laughs> a friendly friendly little cheers here as well too um, I've got a I've got a, a cider and you've got uh, something spotted even cow. spotted cow yeah. a classic Wisconsin drink here the, thanks the to my boyfriend cow. for leaving it in my fridge perfect <laughs> yes thank you Tico's boyfriend for providing it's been food. a while since I've been in Wisconsin but I need to I need to get back to get hurry some up Don cow, come on so. back yeah, we'd, love to, we'd love to have you back on I mean and we, we could talk about alcohol all day with you Dom but uh, of course we should right. probably talk about college basketball I at guess. least a little bit <laughs> maybe a little <laughs> if we have to so let's are, are you getting excited i mean selection sunday of course is sunday are you feeling the madness already even though the big tournaments haven't fully started yet oh 100 uh, percent. i i feel like i get out of bed on march 1st i just wake up and i just have this <laughs> sense like it's time and you know the the northwestern over michigan buzzer beater that seems like forever ago it but does. was you know but that's the one that really kicked it off last night i was I was watching Siena versus Iona, who went went into overtime. All of these all these mid major tournaments that are going on right now getting really excited into the you know the big boys that are gonna be going on this weekend and selection Sunday. It's it's it, it's arguably the best best time of the year when would, it comes to, to sports. So. You're absolutely right about that. I can, I mean, this is a very exciting time. I mean, I, I personally, I, I enjoy college basketball. I'm not as obsessed with it as maybe you or others are, but I mean, it still is just a a very memorable time of year, honestly. You yeah, know? definitely. So with Selection Sunday around the corner, do you have your favorite team or an idea of the Final Four you have picked out? 
Yeah, so um, I will say one of the the sites uh, I actually write for, I co-manage, is The Only Colors. Um, so we're a Michigan State blog for SB Nation. So I am a yeah, I'm a I'm a big I'm a big Spartan. Tom Izzo, you know, as far as I can sit. As far as I'm concerned, he's Mr. March, but of course, he um, really you know, is. Michigan State, <laughs> yeah, but but Michigan State hasn't been, you know, we dropped our last two games, lost at Illinois, lost at Maryland, uh, the buzzer beater to Melo Trimble. Um, you know, going into Big Ten tournament play, uh, I really do feel like Michigan State has to win their game on Thursday uh, to solidify themselves even in being in the tournament uh, because. You know, the way that things have sort of been going with some of these mid-majors and some of these other conferences, um, you know, Michigan State, I I feel like there's pretty much 24 teams right now that are fighting for, like, the last 14 spots Yeah, um, to just be able to get into the tournament. I think Michigan State is one of those. If they win on Thursday over either Nebraska or Penn State, I feel like they're in. Uh, But they're probably going to be sitting at about a 10 seed. Um, As far as teams go that... I think are going to end up moving forward and and really making some noise. Um, I'm really interested tonight. uh, Gonzaga is playing. Uh, They're facing off against St. Mary's, uh, the number 19 team in the country uh, in the, the WCC championship. So, you know, Gonzaga was undefeated. They dropped a game against BYU at home. Actually the third time in the last three years, BYU beat Gonzaga at home. (laughs) They got their Um, number. They certainly do those 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 Mormons, um, but <laughs> yeah, they uh, they uh, Gonzaga has one of those sneaky teams that nobody pays attention to because they're they play in a small college True. on the West Coast, so you know people don't you don't get that Syracuse, Duke, UNC sort of feel. But Gonzaga has you know ever since Adam Mortison and those that unfortunate mustache that he has, it's. It's, you know, they've been hanging around there. I think that they have a team this year that if they're hot, they can definitely make it all the way to the Final Four. Um, but, you know, it really depends on their their region and their seeding. I do think that if they win tonight, um, they will be a number one seed uh, come Selection Sunday, which is, you know, always a, always a great thing to have. You, you know, you end up with the friendly region when it comes to, you know, the, the Sweet 16 and the Elite, Elite Eight and everything like that. Uh, one team that I I think that it's theirs to lose this year is going to be uh, North Carolina. Um, I think that North Carolina is the most complete team. Um, I think that they can play inside. They can play outside. A lot of people are thinking about, like, Kansas and Frank Mason. Um, you know, he's averaging a double, double every single game, probably going to win the wooden award. Uh, but Kansas really isn't able to do anything on the inside, but I definitely think that UNC has the ability to go inside out and be able to hit that three. Uh, they're not as reliant on the three as some of the other teams, but you know, they are the ones that in my head are probably going to end up winning the entire thing. Yeah, and I mean, certainly that's you. You everybody has their 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 picks going forward. I mean, UNC of course is always a, a fairly safe bet. I mean, you'd like and in years past it was Duke was a safe bet as well too. But we know sometimes Duke likes to you know be kind and bow out early and give somebody that that upset <laughs> victory as well too. We've got a yeah. really we've got a really unique situation going on here in Wisconsin, Dom. Uh, University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. If they win tonight in the Horizon League. They will be. So crazy. They don't even have ten <laughs> wins, and they yeah. would get a bid to the NCAA tournament. I I made the argument this morning on the morning show, uh, or on, on the lunchtime show rather, that I feel like that is almost diluting the the overall experience of what March Madness is. I feel like that almost hurts the te- the conference. You know, the, not even the conference, the the national championship run, basically, because you've got a team in here that can't even win 10 games in their own conference, let alone how are they going to fare against a, a Gonzaga, a UNC? They're probably going to get boat raced and basically waste their time, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it might be unfortunate for the overall picture, right, if you look at all of the different teams, but if you look at it for that squad, right? So I was watching Siena versus Iona last night, and the only chance that these teams have to get in even if they like run the table, the odds of them being able to get in to, can you, to the can tournament you imagine are very, very it? small. Can you imagine if they just run it and go straight to the Final Four and everyone's just losing their minds? Like, <laughs> they don't even have 10 wins. How is this possible? <laughs> it's, it's insane. It's crazy. But, I mean, you know, and, and I think that if they end up getting in, if they win, then they are the lowest 
managed to ever end up in the tournament. True. The, you know, you will see a team get absolutely annihilated. Like it won't even be close. <laughs> but it's it it is it is one of those for that team, for that school, for that fan base. It's the thing that everybody is going to be able to point to. It's the thing that the fact that they were even dancing. You know, that's that's what's really cool. And who doesn't love to dance? I'm sure honestly. they're going to end up. <laughs> He loves to dance. You know, that's what's back. Everybody's going to talk about dancing now. Everybody's talking about Cinderella. Everybody I mean, dancing and Cinderella go hand in hand, you know? I, I feel like that... That's what I'm talking about, right? I'm, I'm, surpri- I'm surprised Disney doesn't sponsor March Madness with all the, uh, <laughs> the storylines and the, heart- the heartbreak and the warmth that also takes place, honestly. Uh, oh, but Disney has all the wonderful heart heartwarming tales from The Bachelor. Yeah, through ABC, so, you know, I think exactly. They have a they have enough love around this time of year. They're good. Yeah. Exactly. You're absolutely right about that one. Well, Kentucky's having another successful year right now. Um, they're projected as the number one seed. Uh, how do you think they'll do overall? See, uh, I, I like Kentucky. I think that you know Malik Monk is one of the most talented. Uh, Malik Monk and, and, and Fox, they are some of the most talented players, and they're names that we're definitely going to hear uh, much further past college. Right. But uh, there has been two times this year that Tennessee was down in the first half and then ended up coming back. Mo- most recently against Vanderbilt, they were down by 19 points in the first half. You can do that against Vanderbilt. You're not going to be able to do that against uh, a three or a four or a five seed in March. So, they just haven't shown me the consistency for me to be able to say, yes, they're going to be able to. They deserving of a number one seed, 100%. Their record shows it. You know, they steamroll the ACC, I mean, the SEC like normal. Of you know, it's, it's Kentucky and everybody else in that conference. But when it really comes to it, I just don't feel like they're a complete team. And if anything, this is it, it really shows who the complete teams are. Duke, two years ago, that was a complete team. Yes. Um, Villanova last year, complete team could shoot great from three, but if that went away, like it did in the elite eight and in the final four last year, like Villanova found a way to win. And yes. I just don't see Kentucky being one of those teams. Yeah. Uh, what teams do you think will win their conference in the ACC and in the big 10? I mean, those are two of the hot conferences uh, right yeah. now, especially, I mean, obviously we're here in Wisconsin. So of course, you know, we're trying to cheer for, for Bucky, of course, but re- realistically though, <laughs> of I course. Mean, the most talked about conferences are usually who comes out of the ACC. And in years past, the Big Ten usually, but Ohio State's having a bad year. Purdue suddenly is doing really well, which is really puzzling to me. But maybe I just have been under a rock and haven't been paying attention to Purdue basketball even, you know, the last year or two. I mean, Purdue basketball is 100% centering around uh, Biggie, Caleb Swanigan. Uh, he was just named uh, the Big Ten Player of the Year. Uh, unanimous, both uh, coaches and media. If anybody didn't vote for Caleb Swanigan, they probably should have lost their right to vote or to coach. Um, <laughs> Purdue is is one of those teams that um, is they are going to be able to beat you inside. Purdue's a team that I would be able to say, like, if you put Purdue up against Kentucky or Purdue up against Kansas even, they're going to be able to dominate in the low post, um, especially with Haas, who I, you know, called Herman Munster. He is just a giant, <laughs> big, tall, white dude. Yep. Um, you know, like, but he is, he's, those two inside have the ability to really wreak havoc. Now, the Big Ten is one of those conferences, obviously being a Michigan State guy, I've watched everything go from top to bottom, all the different games. People say the Big Ten is weak. I don't think the Big Ten is weak. I just think that there isn't as much of a difference from one to Rutgers because <laughs> Rutgers is on the bottom, but there's not as much of a difference in there. Um, Minnesota could play really well on any given night. You know, there's a real, real that Richard Patino won uh, big 10 coach of the year because that team is playing out of its gourd. They won almost three times the amount of games that they did last week. I mean, last year, just this year, um, Mellow Trimble and Maryland, they are a streaky team. But if they shoot well, they could win. But I really do think that it's Purdue's year. They ended up losing to Michigan State last year. This team is hungry. Uh, they really want to. They really want to solidify themselves. So I think Purdue's going to win that. And when it comes to the ACC, I mean, I have to give the edge right now to North Carolina. Um, I think that Duke is not completely consistent. Uh, I haven't seen the type of play from Grayson Allen uh, that you know makes me think that he's going to be able to lead the team. Luke Kennard is an amazing talent. 
Um, but you know, they, those two have gotten into some foul trouble. It's what happened in the Syracuse game while they ended up losing. Like Grace Allen was not playing the type of defense that he was going to normally play because he had four fouls from the last three minutes of the game. So did Luke Kennard. So that team, their bench isn't quite as deep, even though they have a lot of talent. Um, I do think that that's, that's North Carolina's, but really no, any, any of those teams in there can really, uh, can really make a run and, and, you know, the ACC, that basketball, it's just fun. It's what Dick Vitale, I'm pretty sure, that what he dreams about every single night is just nothing but a loop of ACC basketball um, and diaper dandies. Uh, but, you know, it's 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 a lot of fun. It's it's the best. Yeah, it's like I said, it's the best time of the year. Yeah. And I love that these conference tournaments are all rolling right into March Madness this year, too. Yes. Because yep. nobody really knows what it's going to be. And it feels like March Madness is, is a full four weeks instead of just like two and a half. Yes, I think which makes it even better as well, too. Well, Dom, we got to let you run, unfortunately, but uh, where can people find the work that you do and also follow you on social media as well to stay up to date with all the latest sports news from yourself? Definitely. Um, so you can follow me. Uh, I am at Dom Garrett, two R's, two T's on Twitter. Um, I also uh, co-founded Riding the Pine, uh, where we talk about sports and tacos and cartoon crushes. Uh, yeah. You can find that at, yeah, it's pretty awesome. We just launched last week, so I'm, I'm really fired up. Thank you. Uh, that, that is ridingthepine.co or ridingthepine underscore on Twitter. And then also the only colors, the only colors.com and the only colors on Twitter. Fantastic, Dom. Always a pleasure. Let's do it again sometime soon. All right, sir? Sounds great. Have a good one, guys. All right. Thanks so much. There goes Dom Garrett uh, as he was chatting with us here live on Brew Sports and on Happy Hour as well, too. Great to hear from him. Great to get his insights into the sports world as well, too. Very knowledgeable, very yeah. uh, very forward, and very just uh, direct with his comments uh, as a whole, too. So I think that that is uh, always an exciting time, I feel yeah, like, when you have impressive. somebody uh, you know, just so, uh, so direct, so smart on, on what's taking place. So, all right, uh, Tika, we, uh, last week we talked about some of the, uh, the best videos of the week, basically, and there are some uh, interesting and elusive stories um, that, are, that are taking place right now. And uh, I kind of wanted to turn it over to you as well, too, so you can uh, give us an idea of uh, what we're transitioning ourselves into here. Yeah, definitely. So Kyrie Irving, um, if I were at All Athletic and if I played basketball, uh, I feel like I would focus on my dribble for sure. I mean, that's such a staple skill Makes sense. Uh, that can help you come, become a great player. And clearly that shows um, he became the best dribbler in the NBA. He did. He certainly did. And uh, we, uh, we wanted to just showcase a little bit of his talent here uh, on the program. So let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, Kyrie Irving and his uh, nasty dribbling. <laughs> You look at something like that, and you're just like, "Good lord!" Like, I mean, I, I've always considered myself to be fairly athletic, honestly, Tika. Just to just to throw that out there, but I've never been exceptionally skilled with a basketball. I mean, I can shoot, you know, fairly well, but I've never mm -hmm. been like, "Hey, check me out! I have this, you know, I've got I've got the handles," as they as they say. <laughs> I, I got the handles. I can go between my legs. I've never mastered the whole dribble between the legs thing. Like while I'm actually moving, I can do it standing still. Like, oh, cool! I, yeah, I'm, I'm really cool, but. I can't do it while these guys are like flying down the court and being like, oh, back behind my back, between my legs, like yeah, around my back. Like, Ooh, three I pointer. feel like the only time I've ever tried was in middle school and gym class. Or yeah. Gym class, maybe. It's like the thing school. to do. Yeah. Or like if there'd be times in the summer and I'd shoot some hoops or play horse. Sure. Play, but yeah, definitely not my thing and i couldn't that's just so <laughs> impressive to me <laughs> yeah it really is honestly i mean you you talk about how important certain skills are in, in certain sports i mean in mm -hmm. hockey it's it's similar to basketball still so you need to be able to have the stick handles basically mm -hmm. you got to be able to move the puck at a very tight close proximity to your body but also be able to, to shift around so many different people at the same time basketball same thing you got to be able to dribble and then also get the pass off or take the shot quickly uh soccer kind of the same thing as well too mm -hmm. you got to be able to progress the ball up the field 
and then be able to make moves as well too with the ball to get around a defender, make a long pass, take right. a shot. I mean, I, I have mucho respect for the maestros and you know of, of the game basically that that make it look so incredibly simple, especially like a guy like Kyrie as well right. too. I mean, that's why Cleveland has had so much success this year as well as his his ability to to drive the lane, to be able to to make the incredible passes, and just uh, the fact that he's so comfortable. It looks just so look so natural. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure for you doing all the dancing you did growing up. I mean, half the time you would learn really difficult moves, but you practice right. it enough, it becomes second nature. Yeah. So. That was one of the main things we try to do. Is you know we learn difficult things, but once you get it down, you have to make it look like easy and as if it's you know not hard at all. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, for those you know watching, they're probably just like, holy cow, like yeah, Tika, how'd you do that? Like that was yeah. incredible. And you're just like, you're probably at that point like, what? Like, yeah, I practiced just, so many I've, times. I've done yeah. it so many times. Like it, it comes. <laughs> That second nature, and I think the best athletes, the best performers, I mean, singers, dancers, they will all tell you that. I mean, it just comes natural, yeah. you know? Uh, I, I, it's just, it, it's amazing how stuff like that works. I mean, you have to be able to just, it just, your, your brain goes to an entirely different place, I feel yeah. like. So, you know, mucho, mucho respect to anybody. I feel like they can do that in anything. Um, so, that was one of our first videos we wanted to show you for the week. Uh, we also have another one as well, too, but this is kind of a... Kind of a cool story behind it as well, too. We're not going to show you the full video, but uh, Tika, you've got the you've got the dish on, yeah, the, on so what we've got for this one. It's called um, When I Play. It's a new short film um, from ESPN Women um, for it's actually Women's History Month. Um, I think Women's History Day is tomorrow, March 8th. Um, yes. So, you know, I think they kind of made this film for the month. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. We'll show you uh, just a little clip of it here as well, too, because it's about two and a half minutes long, and we don't want to take up that much time. But we'll show you at least uh, the first minute of it here. So, uh, mm -hmm. so take a look. To whom it may concern, what I'm doing here is not for you. Not for your judgment or your appraisal. Not for your assessment or your arousal. No boy I know has ever been told he shouldn't play, couldn't play. I am no longer interested in shouldn'ts or couldn'ts or rules not written for me. I am not worried about getting too big or too strong or too fast or too full of myself. I do not agree that playing like a man is a compliment. What I'm doing here is not for you. Movement is a movement. My effort, my ambition, my desire for me. For every woman, every girl who dares to see herself as something more than a body to be rated, a score to be kept. When I play, I keep my own score. When I play, I know who I am. My gosh, I mean that. I mean, I want to keep watching, honestly, but I don't <laughs> want to completely take away from what we're doing on the show, of course. But unbelievable, honestly. I mean, I I was getting fired up, and I'm I'm you know that the the the, the demographic of the video is not even directed at me right. specifically, yeah. but a, a, as a man watching this, I'm like, yeah, yeah like, it's pretty go empowering. for it, girl, yeah. like get it, kick some ass, like woo, go you kind of thing. But <laughs> yeah, I love how it's a combination of you know different sports. How they like, it is, many yeah. Different well, I, sports. I saw the dancing. I'm like, oh, Tika's mm -hmm. in this. Yeah. So like, there you go. What, what do you? Uh, what do you what do you what do you make of something like this? I mean, I know as, as a female, you see something like this come out. Of course, you know that the, the sports world has always been all over the place with with how females mm -hmm. you know you know are portrayed, basically. But when you when you see this type of a thing, this campaign come out, uh, what were your initial reactions when you saw this? I thought it was inspiring. I think it you know a message. You know, they wanted to you know empower women. I feel like that's kind of what I thought of when I first came across it, and. I feel like they're kind of giving out the message like to don't give up and keep reaching for your dreams and setting goals um, through whatever you love. And that's why I like that they, you know, it was a combination of different sports, not just one specific one. Hmm. I know. And I would agree with you on that one, too. And I think I just got to make note of this as well, too, on Facebook. Greg, who's been watching and commenting uh, excessively throughout the show. So thank you for that, by the way, Greg. He says, um, as, a, as a guy that's been blind from birth, I need to say that I really appreciate the video aspect of your show. The video looks pretty nice. crystal clear to me. And I've just been really uh, he, he's been able to to continue to to like uh and comment as well too so i much appreciate it greg i, I appreciate your uh your your overall thought and uh, your continuous battle as well too to to overcome the adversities thrown in your way but it's so interesting though you you look at this video 
And I, I've, I've worked very closely the last year and a half with uh, women's professional soccer. Um, one of the soccer, the soccer show that I host on Wednesdays, uh, Two Up Front, is uh, we, we cover all things American soccer. But I've gotten uh, a lot of more, I've gotten a lot more respect for women's sports as a whole because of hearing what some of these ladies have to go through from. You know, being looked down to not being paid enough to, mm -hmm. you know, being told, hey, well, play like a guy and you'll, you'll go really far. And, you know, comments like that sometimes are, are, are crappy. You don't, yeah. you know, as a woman, you don't want to be told, well, you know, man up, play like a man. And you're like, why? Why do I like, want to? Why can I, why do I have to play like a why man? Why can't I, I can play, play like, like a, a woman? Yeah. Exactly. And I, I don't know if you've ever been victim to that at all, too, it, you know, throughout your career. If people have been like, oh, I'm just man up, Tika, or, you know, like, it's, you know, toughen up, or, you'll, you know, if you were more manly or whatever, you'd, 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 be, you'd do better kind of a thing. Yeah. Have, you, have you been victim to that, to that at all? Um, maybe in a different kind of way. I'm definitely afraid of spiders and creepy crawly well, things. Well, I am too. So <laughs> for that, when people tell me to man up, be like, I don't want to be a man. I'm terrified. Uh, like, I hate spiders. I feel like that's, that's what first comes to mind. I just cannot, I, I will not, I mean, I want them dead. Like, I don't want them crawling like, in my house, but if I see one, I can't kill it. All spiders. Like, people gone. say, like, oh, don't, like, would you, wouldn't you rather have it dead? I'm like, yeah, but, like, I can't do it. Like, I, 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 like, so if a little spider crawled on the table right now, you would just lose your mind yeah. and just be like, throw your beer and be like, I'm out. Yeah. You're like, no more. Find <laughs> Probably. a new coast. Probably. Interesting. See, I that, don't know why. It's a I... shame we were going to name this network Spider Sports. <laughs> uh, we're going to have spiders hanging from the ceilings. Sounds terrible like we, to me. Would, I, I would be, I would be like, find somebody else. Find a different director. I'm yeah. not doing this, guys. No, thank you. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I think major props though to, to ESPN for producing something like that. Uh, go mm -hmm. to their website as well. Check out the full uh, two and a half minute video as well. Uh, just a really great message, I feel like. And I and uh, I've had uh, my wife uh, is, a, is a health and fitness coach as well too. And being able to hear the way that those ladies that I've been able to meet through her business as well too have inspire each other and build each other up mm -hmm. is is incredible. Honestly, I mean, you were part of the Miss America organization as well mm -hmm. too for a while. Same for myself as well too, as as a judge and just fellow follower of it. And you you hear what these women, you know, sometimes are are, are victimized with, or you mm -hmm. hear the the negativity, and being able to to say, you know, rise up, rise up, show how strong you are. Mm -hmm. I have so much respect so much more respect than I already did. I mean, that's how my mother raised me to respect women no matter what. And, you know, I'm not perfect and I've definitely been guilty of not showing women respect in the past, but mm -hmm. at least over the last couple of years, I've, I've found myself, you know, building so much more respect for what women do in their professions as a mother, as a wife, as a, you know, as a sibling, as a, you know, any, everything that mm -hmm. embodies women. I have just been so much more respectful of and just more appreciative of being like, I don't even, I can't even imagine. Like, you know, super, yeah, super awesome. proud, super props, you know, like totally like go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, you know, I, 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 I just don't know what really most much else you can say about that. I, mean, <laughs> just like, I, I think it's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So. I think the video is really cool. And I feel like you can never be inspired too much, you know, like seeing a video like yes. that every single day, you know, waking up to seeing something like that. You can never get enough, you know? You're right. You're right. Greg comments as well on Facebook says he's definitely afraid of dogs. Really? Yeah. It's like, if you can believe that I've, I've, uh. I'm not afraid. Of, I'm afraid of big dogs, like really big dogs, because I mean, at that point, I mean, it's like you could eat me if you wanted to. Like <laughs> little dogs, I'm just like, oh, you're cute. I can. They couldn't eat you. I've never seen a dog big enough. To... Hey, you see, like there's. I mean, there are pretty big, big dogs, dogs there, but yeah, not big enough to eat a human. Well, they could, you know, put a dent in you, you know, if they really I mean, wanted to. I don't know. Eric also asked if we can talk about Packers free agency as well, too. Eric, we're happy to talk about Packers free agency. What specifically do you want to talk about? I mean, that's you got to you got to give us a direction. You can't just say let's talk about Packers free agency. You got so many different ways. You can exactly. Go. Are we talking about players they should resign? Players that are leaving? Players that they should go out and grab? Adrian Peterson, hundred percent, make it happen. Adrian Peterson. We know you know Tom Capers and Ted Thompson. Ted Thompson's just never going to do it, unfortunately. But. Um, Give us your, be a little bit more specific, Eric, and I'm happy to answer any questions or any, uh, any thoughts that you've got uh, related to that as well, too. Uh, while we wait for Eric's response in that regards, Tika, you have uh, something else yeah. for us. That's, Speaking uh, of strong women. I was just about yeah. to say, we've been already on this, you know, like pro-women, like kicking butt and taking <laughs> names. You've got an even more impressive story now for us that I feel like we all need to just be like, yes, bow down. Yeah. We are not worthy. Yeah. Have you ever um, run a marathon? Uh, have I ever run a marathon? No, no, I haven't. I think the longest I've ever run on purpose, I think was a 5k. Same. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Same with, I think same that's with about me. the longest I've ever run. Well, Lisa, How about yourself? Uh, you ever run a marathon? No. No? 
5K. I've, I know a lot of people said. that have run marathons. More I've seen, I've seen on Facebook a lot. You know, people yeah. say, just ran my first marathon. I'm like, yeah, oh, I know, Lord. and I'm like, good for you. 26.2 miles, I think. I think it's been a long, how long a marathon is, or 24, 26. Yeah, I struggle through three, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's enough for me. But 48 um, year old Lisa Davis ran seven. Seven. She, okay. I mean, I, I know people run marathons all the time. But she runs seven marathons in seven days on seven different continents. I'm sorry, what? Yes. Isn't that just insane? So it seven was, marathons. In se- seven in, days. In, in seven days. Like this was like a week or was this like uh, over a like mm-hmm. in a full week? Seven like, days. Started seven on a Monday, continents. ended on mm-hmm. a Sunday. Yep. So it was called the Triple Seven Quest and she completed <sighs> it in seven days, three minutes and 27 seconds. My God, she's a retired Marine. So well, as you can go. imagine, yep. Very strong. Um, but the whole thing costs $40,000. Wow. A lot of money, but I, I mean it, that much traveling. I, I mean, you can see the world, but like, I, is it one of those things where you just, you run it and then you're like, all right, I'm out. Peace, Africa. I run it. Oop, all right. Peace, Europe. Oop, peace. Well, so she actually made a record time for a female. Okay. And it puts her in the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, well, congratulations to her. So, on that. yeah, pretty impressive. But she also, not only that, she's the first African American woman to complete the seven stage course. Really? Yeah. I guess I'm just trying to think mentally, like, where you start. Like, what, where do you start? Like, because Antarctica is my question mark. I'm like, well, the loop started in Perth, Australia, which I thought was really cool because I was just in Australia. Well, Perth is amazing. I love Perth. Have you been there? I haven't, but I, I, I know I, I follow women's <laughs> soccer in Australia. Okay. And Perth is one. I have friends. Yeah, when anyway. I went, I was told that it's like the most amazing spot to watch sunsets. Really? I think. Yeah. Okay. They I mean, there's beautiful you're... sunsets there. Huh. Where did you go in Australia? I went to Sydney. I didn't go there, but oh, okay. Yeah, it was Classic. pretty far. You sell out when going to Sydney. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, continue. But yeah, so uh, it started in Perth, Australia. I continued on to Singapore in Asia, and then went to Africa. Amsterdam in Europe. Then up to Amsterdam. Okay. Why would you, I feel like you would want to almost do the whole like Asia, Asia, Europe and like boom, boom, instead of going down and then back uh, up. I don't know. That's just what it was. And then, and then New York city. So back to North America. Okay. And then South America, Chile. Sure. And then it ended in. You end in Antarctica. Antarctica. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. And that one alone had an eight thousand dollar entry fee Jeez. it was such a high caliber i feel like race. i would want to start with that one be like get me out of the coldest run right? right off the bat you know and then let me make up the rest of the time i might lose in warmer climates right or civilized climates you'd think so she said she packed energy gel packs tape tank tops hand warmers, ski masks because obviously in australia it's really warm and then yeah. you to Antarctica. and it's just an entirely different thing honestly uh at that point i mean my gosh, oh, our, our TV's resetting behind us. Oh I just realized goodness. that. I'm like, why is it black behind me? <laughs> I will weird. take care of that yeah. as, as, we, as we continue to talk well, here, apparently. But yeah. uh, always so, ever-changing on Bruce Sports. <laughs> we'll get that fixed. We'll get that fixed. All in all, she ran 183.4 plus miles in total. Um, and she got lost in Africa, apparently. She took a little detour. She got lost? Isn't I that like a, mar- a marked out You'd course? think. You'd think. There must have been some, I don't know, some construction going on or something. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's hard to get lost during a race. Like, hey, I'm going to go run. You'd think, yeah, such a big race like that. Yeah, because she wasn't the only person doing it, was she? There's multiple no. people doing mm-hmm. this. Strange. So there were 18 flights in 110 hours of airtime huh. through the seven days. Um, I can't even imagine, honestly. And then, yeah, 42 hours, 46 minutes, and nine seconds of running time. Wow. That, to me, is insane. How long again? 42 hours, 46 minutes. In nine seconds. I have a hard enough time working 12-hour days, let alone trying to run for 42 hours. Right. (laughs) And through the seven days, she only got 17 hours of shut-eye. She only slept for 17 hours. Probably just slept on the plane. Yeah. Good Lord. Well, more power to you, Lisa Davis. Holy cow. She says the Marine Corps prepared her well, which I can imagine. I can. Yes. Uh, Holy cow. Yeah, that's insane. I don't think I could ever No, I don't think so either. The previous best exceeded 10 days. So she, so she really beat seven it. Days. Like she kicked its butt. Like, oh, yeah. 10 days? Easy. I can do it in a week. Wow. Well, you know, huge That's kudos so to you, Lisa Davis. I, I can't even imagine, honestly, what that would even feel. Tra- I feel like even jail. just like when I traveled to Australia to study yeah. to study there, I was, I mean, the plane ride just took everything out of like, me. like, what, 12, 15 hours? 14, 
I think on the way home I was traveling for like a total of, oh, shoot, I had it like counted, but I think it was like 30 some hours. That's insane. No, thank you. Yeah, I was you. so tired after just traveling. Yeah, exactly. That. You can't imagine so, like, being tired running? and getting off the plane and then running then as well too. Like, oh sure, let's go run now. She's probably freezing. No, I thank mean, you. Yeah, no, thank insane. you at all. But she's clearly very goal oriented. I mean, yes, she's run also another fun fact. She's run in all 50 states. Oh, wow. Okay. She enlisted in the Marines when she was 17. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. And yeah. then she earned a bachelor's and two master's degree. Dang, Lisa, go. we yeah. got to get Lisa on the show. Holy cow. Very goal-oriented. That's Seriously. Insane. Hashtag girl boss. I love yeah. it. Uh, you'll, you'll appreciate this. Greg on Facebook says uh, that he thinks we need to consider dedicating uh, a whole show per week to just positive, inspiring sports stories. Oh, like, I feel I like, like we don't hear enough positivity in the world. I, agree. I don't know if we could do a full show, but I think I like yeah. I like the idea of a segment or two a week yeah. just focused I think we on could definitely positive yeah. stories. So good idea, Greg. I, I appreciate I that. I like that. I do too. Uh, Eric says, um, going back to his Packers free agency talk, he says, any thoughts on Latavius Murray versus Eddie Lacy? Uh, I honestly wasn't aware that Latavius Murray was a free agent for the Raiders, so that knowing that he is a free agent versus Eddie Lacy, I honestly think anything – is going to be better than Eddie Lacy. I think the Packers need to cut their ties and move along, honestly. I mean, there's better running backs available. Ty Montgomery doesn't deserve to be the starter next year, but I think that uh, you need to get somebody else in. So Latavius Murray, Adrian Peterson, uh, maybe Jamal Charles. I'm not a big Jamal Charles fan. Uh, I think anybody of those would be uh, much better than what Eddie Lacy is doing right now. So Packers need a running game. I, I think we can both agree that was the reason that they ended up not doing so well come playoff time is because yeah. Aaron Rodgers had to try to do everything that he could do, honestly, and then you didn't have a solid running game to fall back on. Ty Montgomery did decent. I don't want to take anything away from Ty. He did decent, but there's, Green Bay could have really benefited from a consistent running game, and I don't think yeah. even if Lacey would have been healthy that he would have been able to provide that because he struggled a lot throughout his career so far to, to stay healthy and just even be a dominant force as well, too, when he's, when he's on the field. So my two cents about, about Eddie Lacey and Latavius Murray. Any other questions, feel free to comment below. Uh, make sure you comment and share as well, too. We've actually had a bunch of people share this episode as well, too. So thank you guys awesome. for doing that. That uh, certainly makes uh, the outreach of what Brew Sports is doing and uh, our show, especially Happy Hour, uh, even more noticeable to the, the wide world of sports as a whole. So we really appreciate that as well, too. And remember as well, uh, at Teeks underscore <laughs> seven, um, at Baxter Colburn on Twitter, uh, hashtag Brew Sports at Brew Sports Net as well uh, on the Twitterverse and Instagram as well too. So go check those things out. Uh, what else do we have to talk about, Tika? I feel like we're kind of we're coming we're coming to the end. I know we got only about ten minutes left of the show here. Um, the Los Angeles Raiders, not the Oakland Raiders, the Los, uh, not the Los, wow, the Las <laughs> Vegas, 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 baby, the Las Vegas Raiders finally found funding from Bank of America to finish their stadium. Because if you hadn't heard, the, the new stadium's gonna cost them $1.9 billion. Think about that for a moment, $1.9 billion, okay? So that's your price tag. Um, they had an investor pull it about a month or two ago that said, you know what, I'm gonna actually take my $680 million investment and just not give it to you anymore. That's such a crappy situation. Can you, I just can't even imagine, like, I have a hard enough time, you know, putting together $100 to go to the grocery store and right. just being like, all right, but if, I, if my wife were to suddenly be like, you know what, I'm gonna pull $80 of the $100 and now go buy the groceries for the week, like, I mean, obviously, that's not the case, obviously, we're, we're completely fine, but like, that's, you know, as, a, as an example, basically, right. someone to be like, all right, go buy $100 worth of groceries on Twitter twenty dollars good luck yeah you know kind of a thing that's a crappy situation to get tossed into honestly but uh the raiders got the uh got the funding they needed bank of america was able to step up and help provide the rest of the money i mean who else to go to but a bank probably got a loan be like yep. yo bank yep. of america i don't know if the stadium is going to be called bank of america stadium now i feel like if you get a massive donation like that or a backing from a bank mm -hmm. it would make a lot of sense to me if that's yeah. the uh that'd be the kind I mean, thing I would to assume. do right I would assume that's what they would do. I hope. I, I hope so. so. They're really helping them out a lot. Yes, they really are. I, I completely agree with you on that. And it's, it's a little strange, but at the same time, um, you know, Las Vegas is such a strange thing. I've talked about this on the other shows with, my, with the other hosts. I don't know if you have an opinion about Las Vegas as a sports market as a whole. 
so many people make the argument that how can anything be sustainable in Las Vegas that doesn't have to do with gambling? But I've also heard the positive argument saying, well, it's an, it's an event. It's an entertainment. You know, yeah. Cirque du Soleil, all those things, all these shows, those are events just Yeah, like I mean, sports. when I think of Vegas, I obviously right away think of gambling and like partying. Oh, 100%. You know, but I mean, I've been, I've traveled to Vegas before for many different events. I mean, Miss USA is held there. Miss America is held yeah. there. Usually, I mean, they, it can change from year to year. But yes. I've been there so many times to see those shows and yeah i mean it's not only gambling there's so many events that are held there as well yeah exactly so thinking about i mean and the las vegas area cycles through people so fast how can you sustain a professional sports team they're already go they're already getting a hockey team next year you know the las vegas golden knights that's already official i mean of course the raiders now getting funding are also going to be making that jump as well too but i i have a hard time believing that there's going to be a consistent fan base. I mean, you look at Green Bay. They've had sellouts for decades, you mm -hmm. know, whatever they can put in their stadium now, 80,000 or 83,000, something like that. I mean, Seattle, New England, uh, the Cowboys, you know, the, these are historic franchises. And the Raiders were a very well-traveled, very well-supported, and still are, you know, franchise. But to go to a city that really has nothing to do with sports? yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question because I know so many times I feel like people go there just like on vacation. Or, I like, I'm I know going my for brother... a weekend if I go to Vegas. Right. I'm, not, I'm not going for, uh, I don't know, I mean, and maybe this is my ignorance, I don't know enough about the Vegas area to say, hey, um, I'm going to go to, Ve I want to move to Vegas and work there, not on the strip. You know, I'm going to just, right. you know, wherever I'm going to work. And I'm also going to help support this professional sports team as well, too. I mean, are there, are there a lot of families in the Las Vegas area? I mean, honestly, every time I've been, I've only been on the Strip. I don't think, I, I don't think I've ever been off. How many suburbs are there of Las Vegas? Probably not. I mean, Nevada's a desert anyway. You know, it's Las right. Vegas and it's Reno. What right. else is there in Vegas? You know, or yeah. what else is there in Nevada as right. a whole, really? Right. I mean, there's probably some mountains and some yeah. snakes and spiders, but like, Yeah, you know. I know. Like I said, I feel like people, the only time I hear people going there basically to Las Vegas is, yes. you know, to gamble, to have fun. I mean, I know my brother, I think my brother went there for a bachelor party once and he said, I don't know how long they ended up going for, but he said it was almost too long because all you do is party when you go there. Like you stay up yeah. all day, all night. And so it gets tearing after a while. So people only want to go for a certain number of days. They don't want to go. I mean, a week is a long time to spend there. Oh, I completely agree with you. And to, to think about that then be like, if I go to Vegas, I'm, I'm not going to go to a hockey game. Right. I'm not going to go to a football game. Right. I'm going to do the casinos. I'm going to party, party, as you go say. Go to the clubs. I'm going to do all that. I'm going to see the sights because, you know, living here in the Midwest, like if I personally were to go, I can go watch hockey here in Milwaukee. I can go to Chicago right, and watch right. hockey. If I want to see pro hockey, I can go to Green Bay and see the Packers play. Right. It's not one of those I, top I things you're going to want to do. I wouldn't do. go to a Raiders game. If they were playing the Packers, maybe. Maybe I'd be like, okay, well, sure, I'll go to a Raiders-Packers yeah. game if the schedule lines up. But I'm never going to go to Vegas with the intent of saying, oh, I've got to see a sports game. Right. Never once in my thought. I'm going to go see Cirque du Soleil live. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go see the magic shows. I'm going to go, you know, maybe try my hand at some blackjack, like all of that stuff. Sports is never going to enter my yeah. mind going to Vegas. I don't think this is going to last. I don't think that the Raiders or the Golden Knights are going to be successful, honestly. I'd be, I'd be shocked in 10 years if both of these franchises are still there. Yeah. I mean, I hope they are, but... I know that it's, I mean, I agree. I don't, I think it's going to be difficult. I do. Most I, people I, aren't going to want to go for that. Yeah, I, I really truly think that you're hurting yourself as you're for the NFL and if you're the NHL as well too. I mean, mm -hmm. you can do so much better. There's so many more cities out there that are desperate for either an expansion franchise and or just a relocation yeah. franchise as a whole too. Don't put it in Vegas. And maybe maybe we'll be wrong. Maybe they will self-sustain maybe they will wow the world and we'll all yeah. be just sitting here i'll be eating my words in a year or <laughs> 10 years and we're still doing bruce sports you know it'd be like hey like yeah. what do you know for their sake i hope that's the case but i'm not so sure yeah i i would agree with you on that one uh all right as we as we close up you mentioned your brother going to a bachelor party now obviously he is not the bachelor your brother is not nick no 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 wouldn't that be funny though i would always be i've always be curious be like so if you're close with someone that yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> The Bachelor was last night. Mm -hmm. Three hour, you know, not season finale, but the three hour extravaganza. It was one hour show, two yeah, hours women tell all, which that, was lame. But, yeah. Because uh, we talked about this yesterday, and people <clears throat> yeah. are probably like, why are you talking about The Bachelor? Why do I care? Well, we talked about it yesterday, okay? And it so happened we, last night. Exactly. We made some predictions. We got to talk about it. 
Uh, I, I watched The Bachelor way more than I, I would like to admit that I do. I'm pretty positive I watched longer than you did last night. Yep, as I well, think too, you did. Because we compared <laughs> stories this morning, and you're like, nope, didn't see that. I'm like, oh, awkward. I did. I saw <laughs> I that. gave up. I, I, watched... I started watching before you did, I think, though. You did, yes. I didn't so... see the actual show. I didn't see, That's what I was I didn't see the Vanessa in. and the Rachel dates. Didn't see any of that. I saw, like, snippets because I was in, in and out of meetings, basically. My wife was watching. Um, but your, what, your thoughts, though? What do, you, what do you make of the dates? What do you make of Rachel going home? What do you make of the women tell all the little bit that you did see? I'm glad Rachel went home, mainly because we already know she's going to be The Bachelorette. If we and didn't know that she was The Bachelorette, would you have been more surprised? Um, I feel like I would have just been, like, sitting there. I have no idea who he's going to pick. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, because I feel like they all, all three of them had really strong connections. So I feel True. like I would have just been like, I don't know, like it could go this way. It could go that way. That, that's the thing. Yeah. So, it's like, where, I mean, where I is it going to go? Yeah. I don't know if I really would have had someone picked out that I really, you know, disliked, but I mean, knowing that she's going to be the bachelorette, I was hoping it was her because yes. if she did continue on, then I would have been like, okay, well then he doesn't pick someone. Otherwise it's way too obvious. So I'm glad that it's Raven and Vanessa now. Um, I really like both of them. I'm going to pick Vanessa. Really? I yes. felt like her date didn't go as well as the people were hoping it was going to. I agree. But I think that that's just to, I think they do that TV. just to make people, yeah, hmm. think other things. I, I like Vanessa more than I like Raven. That's nothing against Raven. I, mm-hmm. I always, I try to put myself in the shoes if I, if I were said bachelor, be like, you know, yeah. which woman do I think would, I, I personally would, you know, want to, you know, have a future with that kind of thing. And I, I've always felt throughout the year that I've, connected more with Vanessa than I have with Rachel or with, yeah. any, or with even Raven as well too. And it's just personalities. I mean, Nick can, seems to have great connections with everybody, obviously so right. far. I mean, people were mad that Christina got sent home and mm-hmm. Corinne was kept away too long and all that yeah. fun stuff. But, uh, I would like Vanessa to win. I don't know if she will win. I, don't know I feel like she fits the mantra of what being a bachelor significant other means. Yeah. I feel like Raven doesn't flow with that as much. Maybe that's the small town girl in her, but I think it would be kind of cute if she won, of course, if yeah. too. But I think Raven's a little too out there as well, too, at times. Yeah. Some of the things that she says. It's that's like, a very good point. Raven, I agree with like, that. Yeah. Calm it down. Put the brakes yeah. on. But it keeps it interesting. I mean, people like good that for stuff, her though. for, you know, being so out there about it. I feel like that's definitely yeah. not... She, some of the things she says, I definitely would not let the nation know. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't be as outgoing about that stuff as she was, but Agreed. I mean, hey, that's just who she is. And yeah, exactly. You're keeps the show right interesting. I mean, everyone was like, oh my goodness. I'm all for that. Yeah, exactly. David here on Facebook says, am I, t-? he's like, am I late? Has anybody made the That's So Raven joke yet? No, nobody has made the That's So Raven joke <laughs> yet, David. Show. He also says we need to get the Vegas odds on our predictions of how long the Vegas teams uh, will stay. I think that is contradictory. Like get the Vegas odds on the Vegas teams <laughs> doing things in Vegas. Like... Of course, they're going to say, well, of course, the line is that they're going to be here for the next 100 years. Vegas, I feel like it would skew their own results, honestly. Maybe that's just my personal opinion. Anyway. All right. Uh, final thoughts? You're not here tomorrow. I'm not. Sad. I'm yeah. going to try not to cry too badly. Oh. <laughs> I get sad when you're not here. I enjoy when I know. You're Me here. too. Me too. Life gets in the way. It does, unfortunately. All right. Uh, well, we're not going to see you till Thursday, so mm-hmm. anything else you want to throw at us before we see you on Thursday? Any, any hot takes? You'd be like, hey, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, so I'm going to double down really fast and be like, boom, boom. Check it out. Mm. Any bold predictions? Anything just wild you want to say? I don't know. I don't think so. No? <laughs> Thanks for asking, though. No, no, absolutely. I don't know. I'm just trying to give you an <laughs> Good opportunity. Good luck tomorrow. So, oh, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, I think Ryan Thies is going to fill in for you tomorrow. Awesome. So he hopefully, rocks. uh Hopefully Ryan and I can uh, do it justice uh, to, to your absence, you honestly. So we'll do our very best. Uh, special thanks to Dom Garrett for joining us on the program today. Uh, if you missed anything, uh, go back and watch it here live on Facebook or on demand, of course. You can go to our website, brewsportsnet.com. Check out all the shows. Uh, we've got three the, the three daily shows, Morning Brew, uh, Halftime, and then, of course, Happy Hour as well, too, and then all the great once-a-week content that we offer as well. Check, out us, check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Brew Sports Net. Uh, you can follow Tika at Teeks underscore seven, uh, at <laughs> Baxter Coleman, which is fun to say. <laughs> um, and then, of course, hashtag Brew Sports as well, too, to interact with everything uh, that we do here at Brew Sports. Uh, no more programming the rest of the day. We'll be back. Uh, bigger and better than ever tomorrow morning for the morning brew myself and jamie evers coming at you for a hump day on wednesday 
She's DK Griesbach. I am Baxter Colburn. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys uh, again on Brew Sports tomorrow morning. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, everybody.